I'm receiving some sort of transmission routed through the main system. Routing. Looking to take a Disney vacation or cruise? Contact Kristen of MagicalJourneysVacations.com. Magical Journeys is an authorized Disney vacation planner. Kristen will get you the best price available and continue to search for deals until the day you travel, taking the worry out of planning your fantastic vacation. Kristen can help plan your dining reservations and answer any questions you may have. She'll even send you maps from the parks. So contact Kristen of Magical Journeys for your next cruise or Disney vacation. Contact Kristen of Magical Journeys at MagicalJourneysVacations.com. So what are you waiting for? Book today at Magical Journeys Vacations. Vacations.com. Wow, that sounds great. I want to go. Well, you can't. Why not? Because we have to stay at our posts and keep rebel scum like him out. Book today at MagicalJourneysVacations.com. WDW After Dark. Now loading. <laughs> Welcome one and all to WDW After Dark, the weekly webcast for adult Disney fans. Welcome to the big show. My name is Al John Go, a lifelong Disney Marvel Star Wars fan, and this is the Live and Uncensored show for uh, for you. So as you're watching the show, kick back, pour yourself a cold, frosty adult beverage if you if you care to partake. And uh, we've got tons of great Disney news. Joining us on the show this week, we've got Mr. Thunder Beaver, Eric Allen. How you doing, sir? What's going on, dude? Long time no hear from you. I seem to have taken the entire month off. <laughs> and it sounded like you were about to do the exact same thing. You were de-resin big time over here. Okay, well, I'm I'm adjusting the feed right now, okay. so hopefully that'll that'll clear up. We are broadcasting live via Google Hangouts straight to YouTube. Also available on podcast form on iTunes and Stitcher. Also joining uh, the Thunder Beaver, Mr. Eric Allen. We have here the news monster himself, Mr. Jeff Davis. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? How are things? I'm I'm happy to be here. Wonderful. Like I said, Good. busy busy month. Busy, busy month, but I'm happy to be back with my bro hams here on the show. You guys have been doing a lot of dude bro shows lately. Kristen and I felt a little neglected, and I know that Kristen had come in and basically gave you a verbal lashing last time she was on the show. Just a little bit, yeah. Just a little bit, but that's okay. That's okay. We, Nothing we wrong with that. We were trying to build her up, dude. We, we, she, she was buying the, the, the line about how she adds class to the show, um, at least for a little while. But, uh, well... Well, it's true. She adds a little class to the yeah, show. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no doubt about you know. it. But right now, now it's, it's back the, to a dude bro plus one show. You know? It's yeah. a dude bro plus one. Yes, it's the it's the three musketeers, three mouseketeers, if you will. I guess we could do that. <laughs> um, it's been a it's been an interesting time. A little bit of a downtime before the D twenty three Expo. A lot of uh, Comic Con news kind of came and went. We've got some interesting news about the Expo. Jeff has got a pantry full stocked of, of news to talk about. Did I say pantry? That's usually Kristen's deal. Pantry. She, he has a file cabinet. You are missing her right now, aren't you? Yeah, you I are. am. 
<laughs> I am. I had I had Dave's barbecue this afternoon. Oh, it's not man. the same. Kristen's cooking is awesome, as you can imagine, Jeff. You know this because you're oh, you have yes. the entire box set of uh, <laughs> cooking, cooking with Mickey. With Mickey yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but and, and I will say this before we get into the news. I have to send a shout out to Tony Castelnova from uh, Disney by the Numbers, Disney Parks podcast, and John Park Park Hopper John who accompanied us on what would possibly be one of the greatest food experiences I have ever had in the Disney uh, property. And uh, I kid you not, the food at the Four Seasons was absolutely amazing. And we'll talk about that when Kristen joins us back on the show. But I have to say that the food was amazing. The staff was amazing. And, you know, we talk about – we'll get into the housekeeping here momentarily, as Jeff puts it. But, you know, we, we talk about the – what is it? The Golden Oaks homes that are there on Disney property, million-dollar, sure. multi-million-dollar homes. Yeah. We went you Kristen there. didn't just buy one, did you? No. <laughs> Does it look like I can afford a $1.5 million home? <laughs> nope. Well, we, well, we were hoping. Yeah, yeah right. You know, we're hoping because it's not a place to stay house, when we, we come to Orlando. You know, if, yeah. Can we pool our funds together? Because <laughs> if we can pool our funds together. By the way, Jeff, your Darth Vader in the background really freaked me the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of hanging there. You know? I, looked, I looked at like... Do my eyes deceive me? Is it like three men and the baby? Is there like some force out there, you know, getting ready to pounce on Jeff, like uh, Insidious yeah. or something? <laughs> yeah, I got, I got Vader sitting in the window. Right next to that is uh, Rex's uh, helmet from the Clone Wars. Right. And uh, I got Iron Man mask right there next to that, you know, so. It looks, it looked weird. Like all of a sudden you're talking. Cause, what would you, okay, because. If you're watching this on YouTube, and yes, this is live and uncensored, so I just let an F-bomb rip. But I, I'm looking. If you look on the YouTube, you see the little squares, all right? It looks like little Instagram squares. But when Jeff pans and he talks and it fills up the entire screen, there's where you can see it. It's like three men and a baby. You remember for the longest time they thought the ghost of three men and a baby, by the way, a Disney Touchstone production. Okay, so it's right. still in universe here, folks. We're still yes. doing yeah. the universe. But they thought it was like a ghost of a baby on the set behind Ted Danson, like in behind the curtains or something, in some of the on some of the scenes. That's what I thought. I, I thought, what the hell? God, I remember that now. Up. I remember that. You remember it's, that? Uh, it, it's like the the story was going on that the that the apartment they used for the location set was where this teenager had um, you know committed suicide by blowing his brains out. Mm -hmm. And there's a scene where. Ted Danson's character is with his mom, and it pans across the, the back of the window, and there's this gun in the window, yeah. and then it pans back, and then there's this kid, and I'm just like, that just creeped me the crap out. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, easy to, it's easy not to, uh, to just pass it by, but once I, I heard of that rumor, I went back and saw it online yeah. and said, Whoa, that's kind of creepy. What the hell? Yeah, you know. And there's a lot of those those weird, creepy things in um, in films and uh, yeah, and yeah. Disney films not so much. Um, and we could probably spend a whole episode talking about Easter eggs that are either intentional or unintentional in Disney live action and animated films. That would make for a very interesting episode. I think folks. we need to do that at some point in the near future. Yes, so uh, keep that in mind for a future show. But um, having said that, once again, one of the best meals I've ever had, Four Seasons, Golden Oaks um, area. The, the, the homes are amazing. You know, this is the second time I've been through there, but the first time I've been through there uh, during the day. And I can tell you all, if we pooled our resources, we could live very comfortably for a week. In that one <laughs> million dollar estate with, I think they have a chef that actually travels home to home, so oh, you could man. have a catered meal. Not that oh, we would that's, need... Oh, that's terrible. Oh, I but yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. But uh, Well, you I know, in case, case, you know, Kristen would be out of town. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah she loves to entertain. And uh, I like I to do know. dishes. That's why I have my... 
my figure the way it is because uh, <laughs> I am very well taken care of. She is a great cook. I appreciate that. But uh, what I do appreciate is the fact that the the gentleman from the Disney Parks podcast, John and Tony, invited us out. We met the chefs and the hospitality people there at the Four Seasons, and it was great. You'll hear a lot about that when Kristen comes back. Uh, <laughs> we recorded a, a live Tiki uh, special uh, regarding that experience, so you'll you'll hear about that. Um, in the days and weeks to come. So, anyway, we do have a lot of a lot of great Disney news. Let's get into the uh, the paying the bills portion of the program once again. Thank you so much for tuning in to WDW After Dark on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. You can help support the show. Uh, Jeff says it every week. Guys, I'm going to say it again. Book your trip with Kristen of MagicalJourneysVacations.com. It's the easiest, simplest way. And we have a file of people that are just loving the fact that Kristen dedicates her time and effort to give you not only the best experience um, booking and preparing for the trip, giving you the insider tips and tricks, but saving you money. That is important, and I know that uh, Jeff books, uh, you know, uh, with Kristen and Eric. You will soon when you get a chance to get out back out there. <laughs> I know I do because I have a choice. <laughs> but uh, when given an opportunity, when given a choice of who you want to spend your money with, you can simply spend all of your money with Disney or the Universal theme parks or the the cruise lines. But instead of spending more. Be smarter. Spend it with Kristen and have her work for you and give you the opportunity to save money where the others do not. And she has a direct line with these people, and uh, it really will save you time and aggravation and, of course, money at the end of the day. MagicalJourneysVacations.com. You can also uh, – and, and tell them at WDW After Dark sent you. That's the most important part. Now, other things – you know that Ant-Man is doing great at the box office. It is a certified fresh uh, uh, movie. We're going to talk about that with Eric momentarily, but you can buy your tickets through Fandango. There's a lot of movies coming out like Pixar's The Good Dinosaur, like Star Wars Episode Seven. Uh, you can pick up those movie tickets and sign up for the Fandango deals so that the moment, the moment they go on sale, you can, bam, snatch up those tickets before anyone else. Choose your seats, whatever you need to do, depending on your theater and make sure you ensure your your ticket is available and that you're ready to go watch some killer, killer flicks there with Fandango. Uh, and last but not least, Amazon. I can't tell you uh, how much I love Amazon. I, I, I'm slowly becoming friends with the team over there at Amazon. Uh, I ordered a brand new uh, belt, a Marvel belt, uh, to keep my pants up. It works out great. Uh, I love it. I love the service. And uh, this past week, you know, they had the uh, the Black Friday specials in the summer, which was great. Much like Jeff Davis celebrating Christmas in July. It was Christmas in July. Uh, <laughs> hey, he wasn't the on only one. Yeah, he, he, yeah, yeah, no, got that's it, right. Got it, it this Christmas morning. I've got it on Thursday. Yeah. And there you go. Well, then I'll celebrate Christmas in July on Friday. So <laughs> it's a, it's going to be a good week on Sorcerer Radio. But I digress. Uh, Amazon has great deals on stuff, and uh, I did buy my Marvel belt, and I bought a brand new iPhone cover. My iPhone cover had cracked, and I bought a Star Wars iPhone 6 Plus cover for 11 <gasps> bucks, y'all. Oh, nice. Very nice. nice. Yeah. nice. Yeah. Very 11 good. bucks. I have a new hope. You can see it here on the screen, and... Uh, that is also certified fresh. <laughs> so you can, you can also, uh, that's right. uh, you can check that out with our link with Amazon. Once again, your one-stop uh, place to check out all of our shows, our archives, social media, and our links to our various sponsors at www.afterdark.com. Now, a sounder you have yet to hear for the past few weeks, I would like to... Bring back the new sounder that you haven't heard in forever because it is time for Disney Headline News with your homeboy, Jeff Davis. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. We're going to start things over at the uh, Art of Animation Resorts. Uh, not very good news, though. A three-year-old boy visiting the Walt Disney World Resort with his family from New York drowned in the Art of Animation pool last Tuesday after becoming separated from his parents sometime around 8 p.m. 
A short search ended when someone found the boy underwater in the pool. Disney representatives confirmed that the lifeguards guards were on duty at the time of the incident, but gave no other details about the incident. A story from WESH-TV quotes a Disney representative who said, Disney is deeply saddened by this tragedy. Our focus is to help the family during this very difficult time. So, I mean, if uh, if lifeguards were on duty, there should be no reason whatsoever why this boy is no longer on this earth anymore. That just um, it doesn't really seem to make any sense to me, but it's unfortunate. So, parents, hey, uh, watch your kids, please. Uh, when you're at the pool, you may be at Walt Disney World, but accidents can happen, and unfortunately, tragedies can happen as well. So, please you're absolutely it. correct. You know, you know uh, when I believe you first broke the news, I I I didn't know whether or not um, uh, there was actually somebody on duty at the pools. Now. We've all stayed at the Disney resorts, and you know that after a certain hour, some pools may not have lifeguards mm -hmm. stationed at them, and that parents should always accompany their child when they're at the pools um, or anywhere, to be quite honest. Yeah. So uh, any any word about the parents? Is it, have you guys read anything about where the parents were during this time? No, they haven't confirmed anything else on the story as to where the parents were at. Uh, but there's no excuse when it comes to a three-year-old boy. Uh, you should have, as a parent, you should be there every single step they take, literally. Whether it's a three-year-old or a ten-year-old, you should always be with your child. Yeah. Uh, but no word on where the parents were during that time, though. Yeah. Well, I'm sure, and because it happened on private property, I don't know how much or how many more details we're a we're going to able we're going to be able to get rather for this, unless uh, it's specifically. You know, released uh, during some type of a uh, investigation or anything else, we may never know uh, where the parents were during that time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. unfortunately, we start with that. But uh, here's some good news, though, if you're a Disney Hollywood Studios fan. After good. weeks of reporting closures at Disney's Hollywood Studios, we have finally got some good news about something new coming to the theme park. Uh, some may not like it, though. Beginning on July 26th, the Ice Palace Boutique opens its doors across from the ABC Commissary. The Frozen-themed salon offers visitors ages 3 to 12 a chance to transform into royalty for the day in the style of their favorite Arendelle character. The boutique is a limited time location and remains open through September the 7th of this year. Now, it sounds very familiar to the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique found over in the Magic yeah. Kingdom and uh, downtown Disney. Um, so you're on the right track when it comes to that. Now, like the salon's predecessors, the Ice Palace Boutique offers package deals, including a couple uh, where families can participate, as well as uh, enjoy snacks and relax in the Ice Palace Cafe as they wait for the little one to get done. Now, the packages include the Frozen Summer Fun Boutique Package, which includes Anna and Elsa-inspired shimmering makeup, uh, face gems, nail polish, a braided hair piece with sparkling snowflake accessories, and an exclusive photo opportunity. Package retail is about $75. Ice Palace, uh, Palace Boutique Package includes all the items from the previous one, it also includes access to the Palace uh, Cafe, reserved seating at one of the, fir the first time in forever, a frozen sing-along celebration shows. That package retails for about $175 plus tax, tax and up to six guests allow. Now, there's one more. The Ice Palace Boutique Deluxe Package includes Anna Elsa costume plus items offered in the Ice Palace Boutique Package. Package retails for about $240 and includes tax up to six guests allowed. Anyone interested can now make reservations by calling 407-827-7400. That is 407-827-7400. Space is limited and offered on a first-come, first-serve basis. So lots of little girls going to be running around with uh, Anna and Elsa. You know, I, I, can't, I, I, can't even, I can't bring myself to knock this, even though it's frozen. Yeah. I, I can't knock this. You know this how adorable those little girls yes. are going to be when they get done. Th that's part of it. But also, bless their hearts, it, this is at Disney's Hollywood Studios with half of everything is closed. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, yeah. A, after all the things that have, that have closed, it's, it, 
you need something in there even if it's only temporary. And I guess it's the fact that I know it's temporary that I'm not really irritated by it. No, it doesn't irritate me really. Um, no, no. Disney is catering towards uh, what those little girls like. Yeah. Pretty much. And um, yeah. that, that's the whole... I mean, you look at the popularity of the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, you yeah. know for a fact that uh, this Ice Palace Cafe and, and everything else, uh, the boutique is, is included, is going to be a big hit. Long lines and everything else. Uh, so, yeah. It may only be temporary, uh, but if it has a real big following, I'm sure Disney will find a way uh, to stick it over in the World Showcase there in Norway. Uh, I wonder if you could do... Yeah, you know, just rip you know, rip out the inside of the stave church. You yeah, know, might as well. Yeah, yeah, might as Stick well. It. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Shove it on there, there in the yeah, former yeah, Norway. Just put it over there. Yeah. So uh, check that out the next time you're at Disney's Hollywood Studios, all the way up until September the seventh this year. Walt Disney World visitors looking for a different type of outdoor experience can now sign up for the new Escape to Walt's Wilderness experience. Mm-hmm. The latest resort package includes a pontoon boat tour from Disney's Contemporary Resort with a Disney guide who gives background on the land and waters. Uh, Walt chose as his backdrop for his new resort. Wildlife guides then board the boat and point out some of the area's air, land, and water animals. Visitors can use binoculars for a close-up look at the creatures. Next, Disney serves guests breakfast, including cinnamon rolls, granola, citrus salad, uh, juice and coffee, and some other stuff as well. A marshmallow roast follows before tour participants take a horse-drawn wagon to an archery lesson over at Disney's Fort Wilderness. After the lesson, <laughs> the guests wrap up the day by heading to the Tri-Circle D Ranch to see Disney horses up close. A Disney Parks blogger said there are a lot of surprises along the way that will entertain and educate the tour guests. Disney usually offers this tour two days a week from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. on select days. The cost is $109 plus tax for ages 7 and older. Complimentary transportation to and from the experience is provided for guests staying at a Disney-owned and operated resort hotel. To book for this experience and for information, call 407-WDW-PLAY. That's 407-934-7639. Not a bad deal. That actually sounds pretty good. That does sound pretty good. Finally, my my cash register queued up. (laughs) (laughs) At least it's not three hundred dollars. Let's just uh, be happy about that. But uh, bird watching, gonna have some bird watching probably. Uh, A couple of fish maybe jumping out of the water every now and then. That's probably gonna be the extent of your creature watching uh, when it comes to that area. But uh, hey, there are always lizards running around all over the Walt Disney World Resort, and you don't have to pay anything to see them. Just step they're outside, free. And they're free. You step outside it's your hotel freebie. door, and they're there. So. Free. <laughs> yeah. I, now I can just see this. It's like, book with Magical Journeys Vacations. The lizards are free at no charge to you. That's right. <laughs> That's a fact. Yeah. Would you like a lizard state room? A lizard side room? I wonder yeah, how many... side room. I like that. Okay. Wonder makes me wonder how many kids have uh, helped some of the Disney lizards migrate back to their house uh, in the car without mom and dad <laughs> knowing, you know. I'm, I'm sure. A bag or, you know, whatever. Mom will find out eventually. Eventually, when it crawls across her pillow and scares the crap out of her. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you are an evil man, Mr. Davis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving the children who are not supposed to be watching or listening bad ideas. So. Yeah, the dark side is strong in you, sir. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell them that I said that. That way they don't send me any hate mail. All right, some more bad news at the Walt Disney World Resort, or actually Disney Cruise Line. A uh, judge sentenced a man accused of molesting a 13-year-old girl on a Disney Cruise Line ship in April of 2014 to nearly six years in prison following a plea deal accepted by the defendant. Uh, The man was uh, 37 years old from Indonesia, admitted to luring the girl into a cabin and touching her inappropriately after uh, befriending her, I'm sorry, and her family during a four-day cruise on the Disney Dream. He faces up to 20 years for lewd acts of false imprisonment of a child. Prosecutors asked the judge for a 10-year sentence, according to the Orlando News Sentinel. 
Uh, but uh, the judge instead sentenced him to 70 months in jail, followed by a likely deportation back to Indonesia. So, good. Mm-hmm. You know, justice uh, in a way, but not what the prosecutors wanted. Uh, but well, at least he'll be out of the country after 70 months in jail. So, mm-hmm. not to come back again. You know, it, you hear stories about about this kind of thing happening. Mostly on other cruise lines, uh, thankfully. I say thankfully because we are partial to Disney Cruise Line. But it, it's it's not a good thing anywhere it happens. But when you hear it, you hear how the cruise lines kind of like fight back and really kind of, I don't want to say fight back, but just make it hard for... It, Basically, for justice to get done. Yeah. yeah. And any time that you see justice get done, even if it's not the full penalty, it it's good. Good feeling. The, the the problem lies in the fact that their ports, of you know, their home ports, are they have different laws than what we'd expect in the United States. They may not be up to snuff, you know. So, you know, or they may be in some type of international waters when the event happened. Jeff, you probably can speak on that more than myself, but uh, it's a uh, it's a very disconcerting situation because you want to have justice, but we can't have the justice that necessarily we want because of international laws and all that other stuff. So it's uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'm like Eric. I'm glad that at least there was. Uh, some justice to be had there in that case. So, well, hopefully, um, lawyers will be contacting Indonesia and letting them know about this, and maybe he will face even more imprisonment uh, once he get gets back to Indonesia. But uh, we can only hope yeah. that something like that happens because uh, I don't want that kind of person. I don't care if it's here or Indonesia uh, walking around where children might be. And that's pretty You're much right. everywhere. So, right. All right. Uh, I think that's the last little bit of uh, bad news that I've got. Uh, but uh, going to head and move on. Epcot's Interventions will be welcoming a new exhibit later this year with the addition of. Let me, let's see if I can get this right. Glidden's Colortopia is the name of it. The paint manufacturer. Oh, the paint manufacturer. Yeah. yeah. A Colortopia yeah. exhibit so will be located in Interventions East and will feature a narrated tour with interactive activities. A mobile app and website will also be part of the exhibit. Uh, Mark Lancia, senior brand manager of uh, Glidian, uh, said, quote, pairing the magic of park experience with the magical role of color plays in our lives is an exciting opportunity for the Glidian brand. The paint manufacturer has an existing relationship with Disney via its licensing deal with Disney Paints sold over at Walmart. If you want to check that out, go to DisneyGlidian.com. Look for the Colortopia to open at Epcot in late fall 2015. They have recently you know, closed down a lot of things over at Interventions, and so it's nice to see that there's somebody going to be coming back. Uh, they're not going to say how long it's going to stick around. But that building seems to get uh, more and more vacant uh, as the <laughs> months seem to go on, I guess, for some reason. Disney well, let's be honest. It's not there. really packing them in over there. No, no, not really. <laughs> but having said that, the paints are awesome. If you ever checked out the paints. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Many times. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Good good quality stuff there. It is. I've, al- I've always walked by there and go, yeah, I'd love to have that blue or that red or you know, just a combination of this or that. We have uh, uh, We have used that. Oh, okay. We used, the, uh, we used the Disney paint. I think it was uh, Heffalump Purple. Ooh, nice. Heffalump yeah. Purple. Interesting. I'm getting ready to repaint this the studio, so I'm, I'm I'm thinking this was originally Kristen's office. Just so anyone knows, if you're watching the feed, you're like, Al John has a hot pink office. Mm-hmm. It's really strange. <laughs> it's like in Wreck It Ralph. Ralph. It's salmon. Everybody confused. Salmon. It's salmon. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, but as you as you look around, you know this actually used to be Kristen's studio. If uh, back in the day, uh, our our WKRN the uh, the ABC affiliate came in to shoot um, a, a story about Kristen, which was great, talking about Sorcerer Radio, which was a lot of fun, and she was recording 
the podcast right right here from this desk and it was in this is her office originally and uh, now she's migrated to the bigger room you know <laughs> and uh, she painted it whatever color she wants of course the boss knows she 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 paints it Naturally. so i think i'm going to have to take some disney paints up in here and change this to whatever color. I think we need to just have a contest. If you're interested in uh, showing me what color I should paint this office, uh, feel free to send your comments to wwwafterdark at gmail.com. And uh, I'll take your You're your paint really opening up uh, some bad ideas there. You know, I'm not going to sit here and paint it, you know, Beetlejuice black and white bars, you know, and going to be... Well, that it would, would, it would match that would the microphone anyway. It would match the microphone, yes. It, well, this is this is striper yellow and black. So, uh, if you, if you're interested in the band Striper, feel free to give me a buzz. Oh goodness! Oh wow! <laughs> I am going to go ahead and put in a recommendation for a Buzz Lightyear paint scheme. Oh, okay, that's nice. Purple, white, and green. No, no, no. Blue. Uh, let's see. Was it blue? And uh, blue and the, that that brilliant green. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm trying to remember what the uh, what the color scheme was because I I was going to paint Max bedroom that co that color scheme. Oh, that works. At some point, but uh, never yeah, did I'd get around to it. it. You know, I'm since okay you're a uh, since you're a Star Wars fan, I'd go with uh, Rebel Alliance colors. Ooh, well that that could work too. That could work. Yeah. That could work. Yeah, I could I could uh, I could definitely do that. Let's see how Episode Seven. What kind of colors will come from episode seven? Hmm. Okay, could be could be pretty cool. Never know. You never, you know. never know. Here's some uh, some good information that uh, is definitely going to make its way around the Walt Disney World Resort that a lot of people will be really happy about. Uh, but it, the bus stop area over at uh, Disney's Contemporary Resort now provides arrival time displays for the Walt Disney World Transportation Bus Service. The display shows each destination that the bus stop serves and gives a precise time of when the next bus is expected to arrive. And our uh, observation via YouTube and pictures and everything else seems really, really accurate uh, with the bus arriving at the specific time that was listed during those videos. Now, Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge and the Grand Floridian Resort have been testing the system for the last couple of years, and a full rollout to all resorts has been expected, though it isn't clear yet if the Contemporary Resort arrival time display signals the start of that rollout or not, or if it's just an extension of the test program itself. But it definitely makes things a little bit easier when you're standing in the Orlando sun in the middle of July and it's 103 degrees outside, and you know that you've got about 10 minutes left to be miserable. So it always helps. Miserab. I tell you, it, I, I generally try to stay away from the parks in July especially. And uh, going there, man, was just, oh, my God, so humid and hot. And, Jeff, you know what it's like. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Eric, have you ever been to the parks during the, the, the yeah. middle of summer? Yeah. Miserable. Yes, extremely, and yeah. It's like, I mean, you're, here's, I'm you're, sorry, go, go ahead. Your ass is stuck to your underwear from the moment you walk uh -oh. out of the Indeed resort resident. room. Uh-oh, what? Go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, again, your butt is stuck to your underwear from the moment you walk out of your room to the moment you walk back in your room the entire day. In July, it's ridiculously hot. It's stupid. Heat index is way the crap up there. So I stay away from it. I haven't been to the Disney parks in the summer for quite a few years now. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't have either, to be quite honest. Yeah. I mean, it was making the walk for the Epcot Food and Wine preview from the parking lot all the way to the the festival center, or not the festival center, but the event center. It was brutal. We were everybody was sweating, sweating so bad when we finally got there. It was ridiculous, ridiculous. Mm. They handed us uh, moist towelettes like like they do in the in in Tapanito when you yeah. go eat. Sure, and yeah. like the. The, the steam rags, and we put it on our faces, and we're like, oh, my God, this feels so good. Now, was it a steam rag, or was it a cold rag? 
Oh, a cold, cold rag. I'm sorry. I cold. Was uh, it was a like, cold, wet rag. You're such I'm a sorry. jackass for handing me a hot rag. After <laughs> 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 I was like, you son of a bitch. I, do you think I need a facial right now? <laughs> <laughs> like, my God. You see the water on my face for crying out loud. Yes. No, you're right. You're right, Dave. I'm sorry. I misspoke. <laughs> I misspoke. Sorry. Oh, I, I was. Cut. Oh gosh, Disney, you weren't thinking on that one. Good grief. <laughs> uh, sorry. Mm. Uh, anyway, uh, please continue. <laughs> All right. Uh, wrapping up park news. Uh, Disney will soon be testing uh, seating for phantasmic performances at Disney's Hollywood Studio. Uh, allocated seating, actually. During the test period, no advance Fast Pass Plus reservations will be available, and instead, guests will be invited to visit a Fast Pass Plus kiosk in the park on the day of the show. The Fast Pass Plus kiosk will then assign either a specific seat, row, or section depending on the day of the test. Now, we've been told on July 21st and 22nd uh, the test will be al uh, allocated uh, specific, two specific seats uh, to, for some guests. Uh, on July 23rd and 24th, the system will be allocating specific rows. And finally, on the 28th and the uh, 27th and 28th, just a section in the amphitheater will be allocated. The Hollywood Hills Amphitheater has seating for over 7,000 guests, and the show's popularity frequently sees guests arriving a couple of hours before showtime. Disney is keen to reduce the pre-arrival time to around 30 minutes maximum, and it appears that the tests are designed to look at different methods of eliminating seating anxiety and reassuring guests that their position in the show will be available without arriving hours and sitting in the sun before the show happens. Now, this is the <laughs> second test in recent times over there at Fantasmic. The park has recently tested delivery of food and merchandise to guests once seated in the amphitheater. So they're trying their best to make things a little bit easier for you so you continue to, you know, hit the shops, hit the attractions, and not have to worry about standing in line for two and a half to three hours just to get a halfway decent seat. But in my opinion, uh, with that amphitheater, any seat is really good. You're going to see everything. There's really not a bad seat in that place, so I don't know what the big fuss is about. But Yeah. Uh, I just cool. Seating anxiety. That's, I think that's the catchphrase of the evening. Pretty much. Hashtag yeah. seating anxiety. Oh, I miss our hashtags. Yeah. Yeah, same here. Good old days of the hashtags. Oh, easy E Ray. Back in yeah. the back in the days of making sushi and But you're right. You know, every people. every seat in that place is actually a really good seat. I would say actually some of the worst seats you could be at are the ones that are so close that you get sprayed with water. You know, and maybe if in a very hot day it would like be preferable. Now. Yeah, like now, yeah, that would be yeah, preferable. Yeah. But overall, I, you know, I, I would like say great. Now, top. you know the option. I'm sorry, go ahead, Eric. No, I'm just saying like right now. Yes. Be, yes. It, that wouldn't be too bad. The other option, I think, for people just so that they can alleviate themselves from that, and, and I'm sure all of us have partook or partaken in this, is to get the dining package with the preferred seating for Fantasmic, which actually does make sense. Yeah, you know, because you're going to spend the money anyway to eat at you know Mama Melrose or you know a Hollywood Brown Derby or you know whatever restaurant uh, you know uh, Sci-Fi Dine In or where, wherever sure. you're going to eat. Yeah, yeah. You might as well exactly. spend that dinner with your family and get preferred seating, so you don't have to get there uh, an hour early for the show start and do the wave. Now it's fun to watch. There's yeah. no doubt about that. But the preferred seating is actually really really nice, and. Yeah. Uh, and they do they do a pretty good job of, of getting the vendors up and down the rows so that you can stay hydrated uh, during that time if your family does need some uh, refreshment or food or snacks or whatever they, they they do go up and down the aisles pretty regularly so yeah yeah they do let me ask you this out of the three tests that they're going to do with this you know one being a specific seat uh, that you can get a fast pass plus four. Uh, the other being a specific row, and the other being a specific section. Which one do you think guys think would be the most popular and would get the most response from Disney guests when uh, picking those up? I think they would. The most important thing for them would be to get an actual seat. But uh, the way that's laid out, I think that's pretty impractical, Eric. <laughs> yeah. Could be. Section yeah. would be good. 
I think section would be good. Row is going to be a little bit tough, uh, simply because you could be on the very end row of a spot that you just don't want to be in completely and totally, and you're stuck with it. Pretty when much. it comes to peak hours, anyway, you're going to be told to scoot over. You know, I don't see how they're going to be able to do a seat per se. Let alone maybe row, maybe, maybe. But uh, yeah, yeah. Unless they decide, well, we have this many fast passes for this, and you know, they're going to be very generous in terms of the spacing per person, which they very well could be. You know. Yeah, they could. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, three different testing periods going on this month, and then uh, I'm sure they're going to make some type of a determination to go along with those dining packages and you know specific merchandise that you also get uh, with those packages will be incorporated into that, uh, depending on how popular each test is. You know what we should do a show also about first-time visitors to the parks and things they don't need to sweat in terms of the details. This yeah. would be one, in my opinion. Yeah, That's, that would be. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, you don't need to sweat that detail. Everybody's what not to sweat at Walt Disney World. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to the midst of summer, <laughs> you're going to be door. sweating anyway. So, you know. <laughs> it's true. The yeah. things you would be sweating so. about. Uh, let's see. The Bataan Death March to and from Epcot parking lot. Um, mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, that's where see. you stay on property and take the shuttle bus. That's right. No, I just find right. uh, find a wheelchair that somebody left in the parking lot and use that. Al John, you know all about that. We did that before. I do know all about that, Jeff. <laughs> 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 yes. Eric wasn't there for that. The, one night we were there at Epcot, and we were just all so tired. Our legs were hurting. Everything else. There was a wheelchair that somebody had left there in the parking lot, and Al John was parked way the hell back there. And the trams were not running we were parked, at the time. We were parked at Hollywood Studios, Jeff. That's where we were parked. <laughs> I mean, it was bad. Dang. And uh, we, uh, Kristen and I decided to use the wheelchair that we found there in the parking lot. I pushed her for a while. She pushed me for a while. Al John laughed uncontrollably and, you know, yes. almost pissed himself. So. <laughs> I did. I did. I just about pissed myself. It was well, funny, I, I, I couldn't find a shitter anywhere. I almost pissed myself. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. The park was already beyond closed. Yeah, yeah, it was. Ladies oh, and gentlemen, the WDW After Dark is filmed live and uncensored for viewer adult viewing enjoyment. <laughs> so. Exactly. Exactly. But, uh, yeah. So there, there's another mode of uh, transportation you didn't know about in case you find a wheelchair in the parking lot. So that is that is. We should put that on the app. <laughs> Who is a fast pass for the Jeff Davis wheelchair ride? I'll I'll be the first one to hop on that one. One of the latest tips coming from the, uh, the After Dark uh, crew. So uh, yes, uh, I would give you uh, the details of the 60th anniversary celebration that went on at Disneyland, but this is only an hour and a half show. And I literally do not have time to go over every single detail because uh, Disneyland went all out is not even the word I would use oh, yeah. for this celebration. They, but they, they put went eight nuts. Is that what you're they talking They really about? did. They uh, really did. Uh, no. And the crowds there uh, were unbelievably massive, uh, but quick at the same time. A lot of people got in, experienced it, and left. Uh, yeah. So it did not stay too bad for too long. Um, they did have the majority of their merchandise. There was plenty to go around, so not a lot of people were complaining, oh, I didn't get this or I didn't get this and everything else. So Disneyland did a fantastic job for the 60th anniversary. So congratulations to them. I'm not going to bore you with all of those details, but those are your uh, top headlines from the Disney parks. Well, thank you, Mr. Davis. I appreciate that. If you want more Disney news... Listen to Sorcerer Radio and DW Sisty. Uh, DW Sisty. <laughs> DW, DW Sisty. Eric, make uh, sure you write that one down for the 10 year next year, okay? <laughs> if we can compile all the bloopers, someone out there can do it. I challenge you, Internet, do it. Uh, DW Sisty with Jeff Davis on Sorcerer Radio Thursday mornings and uh, 8 o'clock Eastern. Uh, great stuff there from Jeff. Always a good time. So let's move on over to the geeky side of things. We've got some Marvel news. Mr. Eric Allen, Mr. Mighty well, Marvel Geek. Mighty Marvel Geek, which, uh, by the way, you know you can hear Mighty Marvel Geeks on Saturday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern over on Sorcerer Radio as well. Uh, 
But I don't know. While y'all were off doing what little stuff y'all were doing, and while, <laughs> while Jeff was off doing what he was doing. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. <laughs> I know, right? What was doing I doing? A bus already. Was well, I at least having hell. a good time when I was doing it? I mean, it, it, yeah. it, it wasn't going to see Ant Man, was it? No, it was no. not. Okay, then. So it was whatever you were doing, hopefully having fun doing it. But uh, Ant Man took the number one spot over the weekend at the box office with a with with a return of fifty eight million dollars. Now, anybody else? Ooh. Anybody else would be jumping for joy, pulling in fifty eight million on opening weekend. Um, but all over the internet, you hear, "Oh, Atman's debut weekend is the worst for Marvel since 2008 with the Incredible Hulk," or uh, "Opening weekend second worst in MCU history," or "Atman misses projections." It's kind of like, it's like, dude, it's Ant Man. It's not. Avengers: Age of Ultron. This not Iron Man. It's the brand new character. Yes. Well, it's a brand new character. Well, brand new character to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But what you may That's or right. may not know is that Ant Man was one of the very first Avengers team members. So you know, finally, he's yes. on the screen. Well, the uh, name of the movie goes along with the amount of money it makes. You know, well, small. It, it also goes Sorry. along with it the, with the production budget, which is like one of the cheapest MCU films to date as well. Right. It, it's going to make its money back. It's going to be successful. You're not encouraging me to go see this here. You're not. You're not helping. Well, you see, that's part of the problem, Jeff. What? You're part of the problem, Jeff. Why am I part of the problem? I've had a, th a thing against Ant-Man from the get-go. I mean, Ant-Man. So I've stopped Ooh. trying to convince you to go see it. <laughs> but exactly. I, I've, I've done the same thing. Yeah. You know, he's going he's gonna to see it at some point. Well, the, I mean, they will play it on ABC Family eventually, so yeah, I'll probably oh, see shit. it. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, just saying. But the thing, and this is the thing about the way Marvel does... Does its movies versus other quote unquote superhero franchises? Marvel makes movies with superhero characters in them. They're not necessarily superhero movies. Like, uh, let's let's take Guardians of the Galaxy for instance. It was basically the Dirty Dozen in space. It was not a superhero movie. Captain America Winter Soldier. It was a political thriller. It was not a superhero movie. It just had superheroes in it. Mm -hmm. Ant-Man is like Ocean's Eleven with superheroes in it. Yep. Ocean's so, Eleven. I'm trying to get the... the, the... Heist. It's a heist movie. Yeah, okay. Heist movie. okay. Right. Remember uh, Clooney was in it and um, Matt yeah, Damon yeah. and all those yeah. guys. Yeah. Okay. So, You're right. I, I mean, it's a it's Marvel does great at adapting genre type films and uh, and putting superheroes in those situations because let's face it, superheroes in the Marvel universe live in our universe. This is our universe. It's all about trying to be real and uh, trying to have fun, have a little bit of that Star Wars humor, if you will, yeah. you know, which has run its course uh, throughout the entire Marvel, even their comics, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's still going to be good. I was going to look up uh, how how good the, uh, the the critics are are very kind of the film. They they dig it. Audiences that have seen it like it, and I intend to watch it soon. Uh, like I said, I was yeah. supposed to watch it this week when I was in L.A. But uh, I, I mean, Rotten Tomatoes loves this movie. Mm -hmm. it, it's it, you know what it, it's it's got like a it, it's it's certified fresh is what it is. Mm -hmm. So I mean the, yeah. the the critics like it. It I think what it is, and and we've heard it come from Jeff's mouth. Oh boy, he's a guy who talks to ants. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it, it's, the concept, it's the concept 
that people just can't get their head around. But if they gave it half a chance, they'd probably enjoy it. Right. Well, yeah, his power is shrinking to the microscopic level. You know, how exciting is that? You know? Uh, I think it was called uh, a movie called Inner Space, uh, Dennis Quaid, I think. And you like that? Did you like it? Um, Did you like it? No. Well, you see. Dude, how could you not like Inner Space? There is no accounting for good taste. Inner Space was great. (laughs) I did love Inner Space. It was fantastic. Okay. Well, it just doesn't go quite that small. Yeah. And like Body Wars. I loved Body Wars when it was open. Oh, there you go. Fantastic voice. But this is this is Ant Man. It, it, yeah, it, it doesn't, you know, fall along with the same type of title like Inner Space does. It doesn't fall along the same type of title like Body Wars does. But Jeff, you didn't. Now, I I'm an oddball. I I'm like very much like Eric. You know, I um one of my favorite Marvel heroes of all time is actually Iron Man, and even when he went through in the comics what was a very dark period where he lost his company, he lost Pepper, he was an alcoholic and struggled going in and out of rehab. Iron Man was still my favorite hero because he was real. And yeah. I love the gadgets, you know. Um, you know, I liked Batman too to that degree from DC, but there was something about Iron Man I liked, and I think it was how cool the damn suit was. And uh, did you know Iron Man going into the first film, Jeff, or did you just... You know, you heard it was a good film and, and you watched it. What was it about Iron Man that you liked initially to go out there and see Iron Man? Oh, yeah, I already knew about Iron Man and, and you know, the, the idea and everything. I've never been a comic per- book person. I don't think... <clears throat> I, no, I've never bought a comic book in my life, to be honest with you. But I was still very familiar with who Iron Man was and everything. That he Cartoons? Was Cartoon. it the Fox cartoon? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Definitely not like the X Men that Fox put out, but still pretty decent cartoon. Yeah, yeah, it was it was very good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. But uh, I, I guess it, it's what deters me from from the you know idea of Ant Man. I <laughs> I think of Ant Man and I think of a show called The Tick. You guys remember that? <laughs> still, a, still a good show. It's still a good a show. Good show. <laughs> it was good. I hear, I hear Ant Man, and I think of oh, the whoa. Tick. It's some goofy-looking guy walking around in a Tick costume, and that's how I pictured Ant Man. Some goofy guy walking around with, you know, some tentacles on the top of his head and a couple of extra hands, and oh. okay, so it ruined the, it for me, I guess. If, if we, if they had just renamed it Dances with Insects, <laughs> <laughs> would you have had more of an inkling to go see it? <laughs> no. uh, eventually, Jeff will come around because it ties into the Avengers and ultimately the Civil War that's come out with Captain America in the spring, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah ultimately, well, it's, it's, like Clark Rick saying, it's all connected. It's all connected. It is all connected. It is all connected. I don't think it's a. No. It's it. Well, you're right. People need. People should give it a chance. It is a funny uh, film, from what I've seen. I mean, and I'm a big, uh, a big fan of the cast. They they did a great job casting, and I like it. I like the cast. All the interviews have been great. The clips behind the scenes stuff that I've seen um, has been great. Paul Rudd to me is is brilliant. He's a great actor. He's to me uh, along the same line of a, a John Cusack. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of John Cusack, and yeah. uh, Paul Rudd to me seems like he's on that route, road, that, that type of uh, comedic route. So I think the reason for the 58 million is simply because of a disassociation between the Ant-Man character and moviegoers. Nobody really knows who Ant-Man is unless you're a big Marvel or comic type of uh, enthusiast. You just don't know who Ant Man is, and I think I there's a dissociation that. there. Everybody knows who Captain America is. Everyone knows who the Hulk is. You know, there's it just has a bigger name to it. And when you have something like the Avengers, people know about that kind of stuff. But they say, oh, Ant Man. Eh, maybe it, I, I'm sure when people saw the trailer, it looks good. But who's Ant Man? I'm sure that came up a lot. Well, in all fairness. 
Did you know who the Guardians of the Galaxy were before that movie came out? No. Okay. Did you like it? I did. Okay. I didn't see it in theaters. I waited for the DVD. Okay. Yeah, there you go. But but the thing is, you didn't know who it was. You gave it a shot because it's Marvel, and you enjoyed it. Yeah. There you go. I'm 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 thinking if you did it this time around too, you you the same thing would happen. Did you and the clone go, Eric? Did you say we have not gone to see it yet? Okay. Okay. We we do plan on going to see it at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. So uh, you know, and I had an opportunity to see the press screening, and because uh, Tony Castelnova was going to go, and he had an extra press pass. Um, I had Raphael take my ticket because I couldn't go without going with Kristen. So, Aww. and it's not because she told she actually told me you should go, go, go have fun. I was like, no, I'm gonna stay. So just so you know, I did not see the press screening because I couldn't take Kristen with me. I didn't have enough screening stuff. So, but dude, I, I, you're, you're I trying guarantee. to score bo bonus points, aren't you? I'm just I'm... trying to let people know the reason why I didn't see it before <laughs> you know to review it. For you know, there was that time in, in Al John's head. I guarantee, when he found out about that ticket, he was sitting there thinking, "Do I? Yeah, I, I really do want to go, but no, I probably shouldn't." Yeah, it's like, you know, how long before she finds out that I went? Um, yeah. <laughs> how mad would she get if, when she found out? <laughs> yeah, no. Can you say I, I, in the doghouse? You know what? No, she would have. Uh, she would have been really cool about it, and she probably would have gone to downtown Disney and shot some pictures and did all that. But instead, I'm periscoping, as Jeff said. I'm, I periscoped from the <laughs> he's scoping downtown Disney superhero store. I was watching that one, by the way. And she was like, Al John, look at this Ant Man. It looks really cool. You should get it. Marvel Legends. It's it's awesome. I like the action figures. I'm like <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so Kristen loves the $30 action figures. I wonder if she'd like the sideshow collectibles. Mm. 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 I can buy that on Amazon. Okay, you know what would be nice? <laughs> if you brought her back like an Ant-Man costume for Halloween or something. Oh. I'm already working on, you know. But see, there what, you go. What kind of stuff to get her. Actually, I was thinking they need to put together a really badass Gamora costume because uh, she'd make a great Gamora. Or even better. Guardians. Yeah. Wasp. Oh, well, Wasp would be killer. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Dude, you could pull that You could pull that off just like if you could find a, a, a an outfit that came close to it because, you know, she goes through outfits like Imelda Marcos had shoes. Right. But, <laughs> but, but all you need is just some kind of cool outfit, and you just get some Tinkerbell wings and you know just strap them on. You're right. You're right. We definitely could do the Wasp. I think uh, it's definitely up there. I've seen some great Wasp cosplay, and uh, you know I could totally do the Ant Man thing. It would be pretty awesome. It'd be badass. I saw a tutorial online about how to make the Ant Man costume, which I thought yeah. was great. It's like you know take some Gatorade bottles and take a little you know, helmet and do this bowl thing. And I was like, oh, that's brilliant. I can do that. That's like a weekend for me. I could totally take a hot glue gun and a Dremel and just go for it. You know? <laughs> it's a weekend. <laughs> yeah, it's a weekend project. You know? I, mean, it's I, I love how you just said, I can take some glue gun and a Dremel, and then a weekend later, boom, I am <laughs> Ant-Man. I am Ant-Man. Oh, really? I could do it. You you know? But uh, it's, it's, it's finding the time. But, uh, and then Kristen and, walks in the house in the middle of it. Oh my God! What is this? And she's like, "Whatever happened to your endorsement with elect, uh, with uh, Halloween Express? I mean, could you just call them up seriously and get something?" I'm being creative. Yeah, I know. <laughs> trying to dust off the old hot glue gun, channeling my Imagineering side. <laughs> exactly, my Disney side. <laughs> Hashtag that one. Yeah. Hashtag okay. Disney side biatches. <laughs> All right. Hey, no, no, next that's year cool. I'm gonna do Dream Finder. Would you like to be Figment? <laughs> I tell you, I've looked all over for a blue suit with with ruffles so I could pull off Dream Finder because I want to go into the park and get the little Figment puppet. Yeah. And do the whole Figment and Dream Finder thing. Yes. Even the steampunk uh, Jim Zub uh, Marvel comic version, the steampunk, and mm. it's hard to find a damn uh, Dream Finder outfit, you know. 
I could dress up as one of the grim grinning ghosts pretty easy. That's not a problem. I think the Dreamfinder outfit resembles Doctor Who a little too much to be able to find it because everybody loves Doctor Who. It, it does. Think? It well, does kind of have a Whovian look to it. Yeah. I was almost thinking Austin Powers there for a minute. Almost. Close. Almost. You, you can start with an Austin Powers and, and, and extrapolate from there. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I'll, I'll think about it. I'm looking. That's like one of my my big costumes is uh, trying to get that going, you know. But uh, anyway, thank you for that update, Eric. Uh, Guardians is not a, is a great movie uh, with unknown characters. I think the cast people bought into the cast of Guardians of the Galaxy, and that helped bring him in. But when you're looking at Ant Man, you had Michael Douglas. You had Paul Rudd. Everything else was kind of suspect. Maybe people didn't quite know what was going on and how it tied in to the rest of the Avengers. And as you notice, um, they're starting to do a little bit of a campaign to tie it into the grander scheme of the MCU. Yeah. So m maybe, just maybe, people are catching on that they need to watch this film because of how it ties in. So. I am yeah, especially when uh, the third Avengers movie comes out and he's part of the team. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Did did. Did I did I spoiler that just now? I am curious to see what Marvel has implemented into the end of the movie. We all know what Marvel does during the credits. Um, I've already seen it. I spoiled uh, myself. Uh, I'm one of those guys. I actually yeah. was like, I can't wait. I'm going to go see it. I'm going to enjoy it. So I'm going to go seek out the, the credits. And you're going to have to make sure you get there early and stay late. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Okie dokie. Is this a long movie? Is it, uh, you know, normal you know, no, Marvel but, time? But I will say this, okay, and spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, 15 seconds. You, There is actually something that they do that is unlike any other Marvel movie you've ever seen, which is they do a pre-opening scene. Really? Really? Yes. Yes. Interesting. So, so before the opening credits roll... Before the opening credits roll, there's a tie-in. There's this little secret, secret thing. And then, mm. so if you're going to get popcorn thinking, oh, I missed the first five minutes of the movie, you better guess again, my friend. Don't Ooh. miss it. Don't miss it. And don't miss the ending for the end credit scene. But there is a little something-something at the beginning. Mm. Oh, something, something. Yeah. Yeah. Changing it up a little bit. That comes from the mouth of Kevin Feige, the executive producer. So, Nice. Yeah. And I already saw it. They already took it down, but I saw it, dadgummit. I already saw that coming. So thank you for that, Eric. Any other Marvel news? Um, well, apparently the rumors of Ava DuVernay to direct the Black Panther movie, uh, apparently there was interest there and uh, unfortunately at some point along the way she uh, she decided she passed on that she passed and gas she, she would pass on Ooh. directing a Marvel movie <laughs> one of the most sought after characters in the movie um, yeah Black Panther yeah you suck you jackass <laughs> so <laughs> she she actually did quote Jeez. on this. She she okay. uh, she was at the uh, recent uh, blog her conference in New York. Uh, she says, "Quote for me, it was a process of trying to figure out are these people I want to go to bed with, because it's really a marriage, and for this it would be three years. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, it it would be three it, it would be three years of not doing other things that are important to me. So it was a question of is this important enough for me to do? Right. Wow. Apparently, you hate money. You yeah. Stupid woman. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's fine that she wants to keep on doing those those she, films. Um, she uh, says, quote, this is my art. This is what will live on after I'm gone. So it's important to me that be true to who I was in this moment. And if there's too much compromise, it really wasn't going to be an Ava DuVernay film. Yeah, that's fine. Wow. Okay, so... <laughs> I hope that you are very satisfied 
with the with the films that you are passing up on this to do. Gotcha. I find it a very strange choice anyway. I, I, when I, I when I heard that she was going to be involved in the project, I found it very strange because I thought that someone with the type of indie film kind of cred that she comes with wouldn't be interested in doing a big-time Hollywood blockbuster. Well, I mean, here's here's the thing. I mean, she she's known really for one movie and one movie only, and that is Selma. She had an opportunity to put Ooh. a thumbprint. Ooh. Yes, yes, you are doing it for for Marvel, and so it will be a Marvel movie. But it's not like they're gonna say you've got to do it strictly our way because you know Joss Whedon wouldn't have done that. Uh, Kenneth Branagh wouldn't have done that, and so this is an. This is going to be a movie, I think it's going to be one of the most significant movies that Marvel will make. If for no other reason that it's a black man in the lead. Right. It, 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 it is, it, it's not just any black man. This is like the character that you have heard fans clamor for since the very first Iron Man movie came out. Yeah, Black Panther is awesome. Yeah. I mean, he's like he's like a royal Batman. Yeah, we were right. And, and so, and, and then yeah. some. If you don't know, Selma is uh, Martin Luther King. It's a Martin Luther King film. Yeah. Um, now he she's done other stuff. You know, she's done stuff um, like uh, I think what she was associated uh, with Scandal as a director for an episode. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, you know. I guess you could say associated with you know black films, for example, you know. Um, but having said that, she has done other you know other projects, you know, mm -hmm. type of pop style projects, and uh, I just not, if it's not for her, it's not for her, and that's fine. She shouldn't you know. And I totally I totally understand where she's coming from. If you don't, if you want to be able to pursue other things that interest you more. I just don't think she quite realizes the opportunity that was there. Well, we don't want her to half-ass No, we don't. Something like this. No, we yeah. don't. I mean, if, if you're going to well, do and, it, go on. And I think, but you see, I disagree. I think she does know the opportunity that is there, and I don't know if she wanted that to fall, if she wanted to be in that... <sighs> And leave leave that whole um, it, uh, that that place where she's at right now in terms of making those those type of serious uh, statement films, you know. And I think that she definitely could have left an indelible mark doing Black Panther. I think she would have done a great job doing it. I think it would have done justice. But you know. Um, how it all ties in and, and all that other stuff. I don't know if she would want necessarily that, all that other stuff. I don't know. Regardless, you have to want to be able to do it. It's like, you know, every director or every, uh, every person associated with a, you know, Star Wars or a Disney film or whatever, they have to really want it, you know? And if you don't want it, fine. Someone else is going to want it. Exactly. Someone else who's a fan, you know? Yeah. Someone oh, no. who may be a true fan, like John Favreau, who did Iron Man, for heaven's sake. He was a true fan. That's why he's doing Jungle Book, and that's why Jungle Book is going to be a great film, because John Favreau is a fan. You know? So, any any other headlines no. there, Eric? No, that's it. All right. Well, that uh, really pretty much concludes our news segment. Let's go into some funny discussion. Yeah. Here is a poll I found at StarWars.com. We don't we we don't necessarily do these. Uh, I believe this is the first time we've ever done it. I'd be curious to see what Kristen's response would be, and this is something you can play at home if you're paying attention. But it's funny what your favorite Star Wars characters will say about your personality. Okay, so I'm going to rattle off some some things at StarWars.com, and this is a. Uh, uh, a great feature. It says, find out more about yourself with this intergalactic Rorschach test. So, if you're familiar with the Rorschach test, fine. But, um, 
You know, what does this mean for your personality? Here are your choices. If you're playing at home, Jeff, Eric, keep this in mind and we'll read your answers uh, and what they mean. Is your favorite character from the Star Wars universe Emperor Palpatine, Han Solo, Boba Fett, Luke Skywalker, Ahsoka Tano, Darth Vader, R2-D2, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Padme Amidala, Darth Maul, Captain Rex, Chopper from the Star Wars Rebel series, L Princess Leia, Qui-Gon Jinn, Harrison Dula, the pilot of the Ghost from Star Wars Rebels. So out of those characters that span a wide array of trilogy, uh, saga, you know, Clone Wars and, and, and Rebels, which one of those characters fit your personality? Make your decision, and we'll talk about it. Jeff, Eric, do you have a do you have one chosen for you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, go for it, Jeff. All right, Jeff, who is your character? And I'll read who who it is. Han Solo. Damn, Hans. Oh, both of you chose Han Solo. That's who I was going to, but I oh, guess no, I'll choose. No, 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 that's good. This is good. This is good. I'm looking for a Han Solo. Uh, quote here. Hot dog, man. Where's my Han Solo quote? Because I, I, there's no Lando Calrissian. I'm, I'm very disappointed. I oh, got wow. a bad feeling about this. Okay, exactly. Han. So, exactly. there, here we go. So, your both of your choices is Han no, Solo. No, I'll choose something different. I'll choose no, 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 this is, that's fine. Well, okay, you can choose something different if I'll you want. I'll choose something different. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read all of them so that you know people okay. can play at home. But here's what it reads about Han Solo. It says, Han Solo, you're cocky. But chances are you've earned the right to brag. You're present. Uh, you're, you present a certain bravado to the world. And though your arrogant attitude can be grating, you occasionally can be a nice person. <laughs> does that sound? Does that sound good, Jeff? That sums it up. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, does that sound okay? Yeah. Eric, does that sum you up, buddy? Um, I, I'm gonna go with R2. Oh, okay, R2D2. I'm, I'm changing my thing. You're changing it. Okay, changing let's see. R2, R2. I got nothing here on the soundboard, which sucks. Wait, hold on a second. I found R2. Oh, okay. I, I've made that sound a few times. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Usually um, once I stub my toe on the bed. Yeah. Damn, Mexican. Yeah, yes. oh, Mexican. Totally, totally. <laughs> um, you are a friend who's constantly prepared to jump in and save the day but you never get thanked for your efforts. People don't often listen to your cautionary advice, but you don't quit trying to give it. So there you are. There you go. I'll, That's I'll R2 take that. Okay. okay. So out of those characters, who should I choose? Well, my first inclination is to go with Obi-Wan Kenobi. So that's my character, uh, Obi-Wan. Where's Obi-Wan on this soundboard here? I don't have... Oh, here you go. I felt a great disturbance in the Force. Obi-Wan. By the way, the new Star Wars app is awesome, if you haven't tried that out. Sweet. Oh, well, yeah, you can it. Jedi yourself. It's pretty nice. nice. Well, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're not put off by the idea of bending the truth for the sake of accomplishing a mission. You're wise and you should have intentions that don't all, and you have sound intentions that don't always come through in your actions. Oh. Well, maybe. I can see that. That might be a possibility. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So let's go over some other characters that you may have chosen. Okay, this is for the benefit of our listeners, our viewers on YouTube. If your if your favorite Kemp, uh, emperor, if your favorite character is the emperor, <laughs> I my say. favorite emperor is Ming the first. <laughs> if, if your favorite character is the emperor, here it is. You're always five moves ahead of everyone else. You're ambitious and never let an opportunity pass you by. You never dwell on the past and are always looking ahead. Good, good. So that is the Emperor. How about Boba Fett? If your favorite that character was my is... other choice. All right. Okay. So uh, I don't know if this fits you, Eric. Boba Fett, if you're a person of few words and great determination... Okay. That's uh, why I may... didn't... Yeah. Uh, it may take you a while to get the job done, but you won't give up. 
and you probably also like cool armor. Oh, who doesn't like that? Yeah, you know, yeah. It's always about the armor. Plus, he's got a cape. You know, no cape, stunning. It's not a bad thing. There's no Lando Calrissian. I'm surprised. Hmm. If you chose Luke Skywalker, this is what it says about you. You're an optimist who always points out a brighter future to anyone who can't see it. You're earnest and thoughtful, but that doesn't stop you from acting impulsively. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Yeah. I wanted to go to Tachi Station to get some power for converters. You can waste time with your friends when your chores are done. Thank you. Now go wash those droids, or I'll make you drink the blue milk again. <laughs> and Baru spiked it. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Owen. Thanks, Uncle Owen. If your favorite character was uh, Anakin's Padawan learner, Ahsoka Tano, and uh, this is Ashley Eckstein here, all right, you understand the difficult of making the right decision versus the easy decision. You've absorbed knowledge from multiple mentors and applied it, but ultimately forged your own path. So, the path least taken. If your favorite was our very favorite Sith Lord, Darth Vader, you're used to being in charge and getting your way. You don't suffer fool. You don't. <laughs> you don't suffer fools and are likely to cut someone out of your life if he or she makes you angry. Yeah, sounds like Kristen. I think Kristen's favorite would be Darth Vader. <laughs> Daddy, you know what? Off. I ain't. I ain't going there. I'm not going to go there. Yeah. She'll be the first to tell you. She'll be the first to tell you. If your favorite character was pr uh, Princess or Queen Amidala, you've had to put others before yourself for most of your life. You are committed to the people and their rights and are willing to fight for the greater good. So, Natalie Aww. Portman fans, that's, that's you. How about the two-bladed lightsaber of Darth Maul? Very short and sweet, this is. You're the strong and silent type. You're calculating and patient, and you know how to hold a grudge. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I could have gone yeah. with that one, too. Yeah. Yeah, I could have gone with that, yeah. yeah. Um, Captain Rex, okay? You're committed to doing the right thing regardless of the cost. You're loyal to your family and friends, and above all else, you're reliable when the going gets tough. The tough get going. That's a good one. Yeah, hmm. that's good. Uh, one of my favorite new droids is Chopper, the little orange droid on Star Wars Rebels. You're a bit of a curmudgeon who likes to wave your arms in the air when things go wrong. However, as much as you might gripe about it, you're there for your friends when they need you the most. There you go. I like it. It's like, oh, oh uh, they'll do it. Damn it. <laughs> so that's Chopper. That's Chopper. He's kind of like Mel from Mel's Diner, actually. Yes. Yes. A little bit of a curmudgeon. Ultimately has a heart of gold. Princess Leia, if you choose Princess Leia, here you go. You don't hesitate to jump in and take control of any situation, no matter how hairy. Chewy. <laughs> Move this carpet. walking carpet. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're strong-willed and always full of your responsibilities. There you go. One of my, my second favorite character on here, Qui-Gon Jinn. I am a big fan of Liam, Liam Neeson. Uh, big fan of Qui-Gon Jinn. You're a With touch rebellious... Beat. What's that? With some of the corniest lines ever in a Star Wars movie. Probably so, but uh, you know, I did like him in Taken. I I I, I try to think of Qui Gon Jinn saying the words from Taken in episode. Oh, that would have been great. much better if I overdubbed overdubbed those words. You know, I, you know, don't don't screw with my family. I'm coming to get you. I have a special oh. set of skills. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like it. No I like shit. It. I like it. Yes, yes. I have a special set of skills. Yes, I like it. Uh, Qui-Gon, if your favorite is Qui-Gon, you're a touch rebellious and likely to split away from the group to explore your own. Your life isn't necessarily guided by rules and order. Hmm. Interesting. It sounds like my room right now. No rules, no order. And uh, if your favorite... No, I didn't was... hear the word pink in there. There is no pink. <laughs> no pink. Um, if your favorite was the new pilot of the ghost, uh, Harrison Dula, which I really dig this character. You're a natural leader who understands that sacrifice is sometimes, is sometimes necessary in order to make the biggest impact. You can be trusted to keep important information secret. So there you have it. And this comes to us from Amy Radcliffe at Amy Geek. I follow her on, on Twitter, and uh, you should too. 
and uh, I'll post that particular survey on our show notes on YouTube and the podcast so you too can take the uh, the quiz and find out which one of these characters you're most like. And uh, I think uh, that's good, yeah. you know, what it says about you, you know? Both of you Han Solo. So there you have it. I have two Han Solos and an Obi-Wan on the show and a Darth Vader. The, the I know solo Christian wasn't was. all that solo, was it? No, no. The Han duo. Yeah, there yeah. you go. <laughs> as, as it were. That pretty much wraps up the show for tonight. Once again, so happy to be with my brohams for this particular show. It was the, uh, the Dude Bro Show plus one. So the dudes right off into the sunset for tonight. Next week, Kristen, hopefully she'll be back. We'll give you a full report. And what's going on in terms of the food and wine festival, our uh, trip to the Four Seasons and uh, the Golden Oaks uh, Disney play, place. You can call it a complex. I don't know what you want to call it. The, uh, the <laughs> compound. Homes, the compound. Wow, what is this? It's like Charlie Manson over here. A compound, if you will. Yeah, that's uh, not Charlie Manson. That's Donald Duck. It's Donald Duck. That's right. Quack, quack. I don't even know. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, tell people where people can find you, Jeff. On uh, Twitter, at DW underscore 60, and over on Facebook in the SR Fun Zone. That's there you go. Yeah, yeah. Interact with us. We'd love for you to do that. And Mr. Eric Allen. Uh, for Disney-related uh, matters, on Twitter at at Sorcom Review, and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Sorcom Review, as well as the Source of Radio Disney Fun Zone. Uh, for more general geekeries, uh, particularly Marvel, you can uh, find me on Twitter at, at Uncle Servo. Thank you, sir. You can find me at Jedi Mouseketeer on Facebook, JediMouseketeer.com, uh, Facebook and Twitter. You can also follow our shows, uh, you know, Disney. You can find us at WW Tiki Room at Dining at Disney if you love that, DiningAtDisney.com. Kristen is working on her new book, The Epcot International Food and Wine Festival 2015 Guide. Um, that's going to be great. And uh, for more on all things Disney food or travel, feel free to uh, check out at DiningAtDisney.com. You can also check out all of us and our show archive at www.afterdark.com, WDW After Dark uh, webcast on uh, Facebook, and WW After Dark on Twitter as well. So uh, follow us on Twitter. Be part mm. of the dark side of the force. And uh, you can Everything also... Everything is happening is so proceeding according to my design. That's right, my design. Uh, feel free to also uh, subscribe, like our show, Put the thumbs up in the show if you're watching it on YouTube. Leave us those five-star reviews on iTunes. We talked that we're going to read some of these reviews. Let's wait for Kristen. We'll read reviews um, if you leave them, and you should leave them. Why wouldn't you want to support the show? Yeah. Every review that we get on iTunes, all the thumbs up we get on YouTube, all the thumbs up that we get on Stitcher Radio really helps the algorithm, helps us move up in the ratings and the rankings. Right now... Uh, we're doing pretty damn good, so we appreciate that. I know that everyone out there listening, um, you, you love the show. Please support the show. Spread the word about the show. We would really appreciate it. We do this as a passion project. No one gets paid for this. We just have a really good time doing it and sharing our fandom with you. So thank you at home for listening, downloading the show, and supporting us for all of these years. Uh, we have uh, 65 some odd shows on the internet. People can, can watch and listen. But we've been doing this for quite some time, and uh, now that we have the technology, uh, Google Plus has been doing better for us. I, I, I can only predict that we're going to be doing this show for many years to come, thanks to your support at home. So uh, thank you for that. In the meantime... Once again, have a great week. We'll see everybody next week for another show. And uh, if you're missing any shows, be sure to refresh that feed on iTunes, and uh, magically all the shows will appear. It's that simple if you missed out a show. So uh, feel free to do that on your browser, on your podcatcher of choice. So in the meantime, have a great week. Don't forget to support our sites, and we will see you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. See ya! Crisis for the geek kind. Top geek officials admit they underestimated the hipster's defense capability. Join the geek revolution and save the galaxy. Geeks from all over the globe are joining up to fight for the future. They're doing their part. Are you? Want to know more? 
Join We Be Geeks and the Geek Revolution and save the world. Service guarantees citizenship. Listen to We Be Geeks podcast on iTunes and Stitcher or online at webegeeks.net. We Be Geeks, your voice for the geek revolution. Want to know more?